Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the recently updated version of the Oppose This Invisible Carry-On Backpack. And we had the original Invisible Carry-On Backpack on the channel a while back, and it's been one of the most versatile travel bags that we've had. It was very stylish, and it had the ability to expand and compress to work well for both daily and travel use. And so I was very excited when the company reached out to see if I wanted to try the updated version of the carry-on bag. And I've been using it for about a month so far, and it's been a great experience. The bag keeps a lot of the things that made the first version so great. It's very stylish. It has a slightly updated streamlined look. It's a little bit smaller. It doesn't have that same expandability that the original had. But I've been a big fan of the overall silhouette and size and the way that the organization has been laid out. So really great experience so far. I'm excited to share it with you guys. And I wanna go ahead and thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And let's just go ahead and jump in and take a closer look at the updated invisible carry-on bag from Oppose This. And so starting off with the outside of the bag, I have to say I am a big fan of the updated and streamlined look. The bag looks very clean and minimal. It's just very sleek. I love the black coloring. I feel like this is gonna work well with a variety of outfits and in a ton of different environments for taking to work or for walking around the city. As I was first exploring the outside of the bag, you could tell that a post this really listened to the feedback provided by users of the original bag. The most notable change, in my opinion, is the removal of the wings that the original included that expanded out to allow you to give the bag a little bit more capacity. This always seemed like a strange design choice. It worked well for allowing you to store extra stuff in your bag and giving it a less boxy look, but it kind of clashed with the clean look of the rest of the bag. It had some extra buckles and straps and it just made it feel less invisible than a lot of the company's other bags. So really like that those were removed. I think this makes the bag look much cleaner and sleeker. One thing that is very unfortunate in my opinion about the loss of the wings is that you also no longer have the ability to expand and compress the bag down. The original version went from 24 liters to 33 liters and it worked very well for both daily and travel use. So you no longer have that ability. You just have one main compartment, which is pretty spacious. It is 25 liters in capacity which is more than enough to carry everything that you'll need for your day to day. And because of the way the bag is laid out with the suitcase style opening, which we'll look at in a little bit, you can still carry a lot of stuff. I can definitely fit enough stuff to get me through a week of traveling. And I love that while I'm wearing the bag, even when it's completely packed out, it still has a very slim look. It hugs my back very closely. So it never looks much larger than a regular day bag, which has been really impressive. It reminds me a lot of the Arquito Saxon, which we looked at a while back, which was another great kind of bucket style bag that worked well for daily and travel use without expanding and compressing. So even though I'm sad about the loss of the compression and expansion, I do think that the company found a nice middle ground with this size. It still works well for both use cases and it does give the bag a more streamlined look with less zippers and complications. Besides the removal of the wings, I'm glad that the company didn't make any huge changes to the style because the original still looked very nice. There's just a lot of little tweaks that I'll call out as we go along, but they still have that nice durable nylon and polyester blend that offers a nice amount of weather resistance. Really great YKK and weather resistant zippers all around the bag. One thing that was a very nice improvement was that they updated the zipper pulls. The original had a lot of these style zipper pulls here with these pull tabs, which made them very easy to grab, but there were so many zippers on the bag that they would get tangled and it was hard to tell which ones went with which pockets so I really like the addition of these smaller pulls here which give the bag a cleaner look as well and I also love that these actually lay down flat when not in use so it prevents them from flopping around it makes the bag very quiet and it just keeps everything in place so that you can easily grab it when you need it and they can stay out of the way when not Another benefit of keeping this nylon polyester blend is that it also makes the bag a little bit lighter than a lot of the other travel bags in this category while not losing durability. So the bag comes in at about 2.3 pounds and because of the 25 liter capacity, this is gonna work very well for carrying on to pretty much any airline that I can think of. Continuing along the outside, the bag has two handles, one on the top and one on the side that make it very easy to pick the bag up or put it into an overhead storage compartment. I also like the one on the side for carrying this like a briefcase. The bag, because of its clean look, actually worked pretty well in that mode if you wanna walk into a business meeting and not wear your bag. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the ability to tuck the straps away, so you still have some dangling straps when you're carrying it like a briefcase, but I still think it works well because of the overall look of the backpack. The handles themselves have been very well implemented. They're very similar to the ones on the original carry-on bag, so nice, thick material, very comfortable to hold. They actually sit pretty flush against the bag so they don't stick out awkwardly, and they just add a nice visual accent to the outside of the bag. Continuing on with the straps and the back paneling, this has been very well implemented. The straps have been very comfortable, nice and soft, but still well padded. They have a nice meshy material on the inside to prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to prevent them from digging into my shoulders. 
they're not quite as contoured as I have seen in a lot of the bags that we've been checking out recently, so I do wish they had a little bit more of a curve, but so far they have been very comfortable, just like the straps on the original carry-on bag. On top of that, the bag also has an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute some of the weight. Continuing on with the back paneling, I really like how this has been implemented here. It's been very comfortable. There's a lot of padding. It's very soft. It has the same meshy material that we saw on the straps. There's also a little bit of elevation here that creates this air channel to help yeah, airflow while you're wearing this with a lot of weight. I do wish that the padding here had been just a little bit more elevated to provide some extra protection against moisture, but for the most part, the bag has been very comfortable. Reminds me a lot of the Air Travel Pack 2 which has been one of my favorite travel bags to use, so really nicely implemented here. One thing that might have been nice to include on a bag this size might have been something like a luggage pass-through to be able to rest this on your carry-on bag if you're traveling with a suitcase. The last thing that I'll call out while we're on the straps is that they have this nice plastic clip to help keep the extra strap from flopping around. Even after you adjust it, if you need to tighten the straps a little bit, it's nice that this helps keeps everything in place to maintain the clean look of the bag. And so jumping into the organizational options, the first pocket I'll call out is the laptop area, which has actually changed a little bit from the original carry-on. Before it was a top loading compartment and now it has been moved to a side opening zipper, which I really like. I think this is always a little bit more easy to grab your laptop while you're going through TSA. I also think it works very well when you have the handle on the side to be able to reach down and grab your laptop. So I really like the decision to make this a side opening compartment. The zipper here has a great water guard to help keep your device protected from the elements and it has a nice easy opening here. And so looking into the compartment, it actually has a separate sleeve for the laptop. On the back of that compartment, there is a soft fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. And so you can definitely fit up to a 15 inch laptop in here. You can see the leftover space. Currently what I have is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. And so I really like the amount of protection that has been added to the bottom of the laptop area. It's slightly elevated. So if you place your bag down on the ground, the laptop is not gonna be making contact directly with the floor. And so it has this slightly padded sleeve to help keep it separated from the rest of the compartment. The back paneling really offers a nice amount of protection. I do wish this sleeve here was a little bit more padded. It's kind of flimsy. It just serves more as a separator with the rest of the compartment, but it also provides that elevation that we were just talking about. So a nice amount of space. As you can see, the compartment opens up pretty wide. So if you have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. And then it's nice that the compartment is large enough to hold other items. If you have a tablet, you would be able to fit it in here. Currently what I have here is just a folder with some papers and receipts. And I figured because that was flatter, it wouldn't put a lot of pressure on the laptop, but you do have some leftover space here if you have taller items that you wanna place in this area. Next up, the bag has a smaller quick access compartment on the top with a nice weather sealed zipper. And so this is great for being able to reach down and grab some of those smaller accessories quickly while you're on the go. And so opening this up, there's a nice amount of space here. Currently what I have is just a lightning cable for my phone. And then I also have my Apple Magic Mouse. But you can see the compartment goes pretty deep. I can fit almost my whole hand in there, so I definitely could have put something like my sunglasses in here. One nice change from the original carry-on bag is that before this had a black lining on the inside, which made it very hard to see what was in the compartment. I really like this lighter lining so that I can see everything that's in there. And more importantly, this area actually has a secret zippered compartment on the bottom that you could use to store some of your sensitive items. So you might be able to see the zipper in through there. And so you can reach down and that's very well hidden. So if you have something like your wallet or your passport, this is gonna be a great compartment to put that. It goes just a little bit deeper than the bottom of this area. And so going down, currently what I have in there is just my wallet. But I really love the idea to include that hidden compartment. And because of the inner lining, it's also easier to find the zipper if you need to get into that area a little bit quicker. So nice adjustments there and just a really solid compartment overall. On the front, the bag has another simple and larger quick access compartment which you could use to store some of your bulkier tech accessories. This would be great for something like a laptop charger. As you can see, it has a fair amount of volume. Currently what I have in here is just my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And then I also have my Utec wireless charger for my phone. So there's no internal organization in this area here, just a nice amount of space, a very simple compartment. This might also be a great spot to put something like your toiletries or a smaller dop kit if you need to get to it quickly while you're going through TSA. So really like the versatility of these larger and simple compartments. Next up on the front, the bag has another larger accessory area with a lot of internal organization. And so this compartment opens up pretty widely. I was impressed with how much space was offered in addition to the fact that it has a lot of internal slip compartments. So as you can see here, I have some of my larger accessories that I would typically keep in the main area of bags. So the first item that you see here is my Beats Studio Wireless. And then next up, I have my GoRuck Wired Up where I have all of my smaller tech accessories and dongles and things like that. 
And so I really like just how much space is offered by this compartment, even if you don't want to use the internal organization. With that being said, I do like the pocket layout in this area. The slip pockets that have been provided have a nice amount of volume, which makes them very useful. Here in the first one, I just have my Ray-Bans with their case. And then next to that, I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then above those compartments, there is a simple, flatter, zippered compartment. This would be a great area to put something like a notebook. Currently what I have is just my Kindle e-reader. But this still comes up a decent amount. I was impressed with how much storage it had. You can see I can fit my whole hand in there. It's a little bit elevated off the bottom of the bag as well. So great spot to just organize some of those smaller accessories that you don't want floating around. The last bit of organization offered in this area is a larger sleeve that works well for holding something like a tablet. It feels a little bit more padded than the other slip compartment, so I think it's meant to hold something slightly more delicate. So currently what I have in here is my iPad mini 2. As you can see, that fit in there very easily. I think it could fit up to a full-size 10-inch tablet in here pretty comfortably. And so as far as kind of these admin organizational areas that we've seen on a lot of travel bags, this is one of the best that I've seen. It's been the most useful and easy to organize for me. Works a little bit better than something like we've seen on the Tortuga set out bag, which has a lot of pockets, but they're not always very useful. So I really like that this chose to go a little bit more minimal, but each of the pockets allows you to put a lot of stuff in it. And so the last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment, which has a nice suitcase style opening for easy packing. So opening this up, you can see everything that I have in the main compartment. The way that I have the bag laid out right now is kind of a hybrid daily slash travel bag. So I have most of the items that I would use for my day to day. And I also put in a packing cube just to showcase how you can maybe do work travel with the bag. So first up, I have just a full size moleskin notebook. And then I have my Levitate portable standing desk. And then the last item that I have in here is my larger double sided packing cube that you've seen in all my other travel bag videos, which has my jeans and larger clothing items. And so now with the compartment empty, you can see it's just a nice simple bucket of space, no compression straps or internal pockets here. So I really like the simplicity here to let me lay out everything the way that I typically like to pack. And then on the flap, there's just a simple zippered compartment that you can use to store something like a laptop charger or some toiletries. I just chose to leave this empty to provide more space in the outer compartments. But if you like having that extra bit of separation for the items in the main compartment, this is definitely gonna be useful. Now that the bag is empty, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more travel focused items here just to see how much I can actually fit. And so the first item I'll place back in is my larger double-sided packing cube. Then I also have my smaller packing cube with my socks and underwear and smaller clothing items. And then I'll throw in an extra pair of shoes. Now with these items here, it's typically enough for me to travel for two to three weeks. I might throw in an additional pair of shoes. I'd also wanna travel with my dop kit, which I think I could just throw into one of the front accessory compartments. And so let's just see if this closes up. As you can see, I was able to close that pretty easily. And the most important thing is that the rest of the bag doesn't look super packed. So there's still plenty of room, as I said, to throw in something like my dop kit or an extra pair of shoes or even some of my day-to-day -day accessories that I wanna take with me like my wire dop. So really impressive how much space is offered without the bag looking too big. And so even though I missed the compression a little bit, it looks like I'm still able to fit almost the same amount of stuff and also have a more streamlined bag. So really great implementation overall. Very impressed with all the updates that the company was able to make and still keep the bag just super useful and very stylish. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the updated version of the invisible carry-on bag from Oppose This over the past month. The bag has been very comfortable to wear. It still has the same solid build quality and style. And I really enjoyed the new streamlined look and size as well as some of the updates that they made to the organization. And so you can purchase this on the company site for about 195 euros based on the different exchange rates for currency. It may vary a little bit when you're watching this video, but it should be around 200 US dollars. Given the features and quality of the bag, the $200 price point is pretty reasonable. It definitely feels like a bag that's gonna hold up well over the longer term. With that being said, there are a lot of great stylish and versatile bags that are coming out in the same kind of price range that might be worth taking a look at. The first bag that came to mind as I was using this bag was the Arquito Saxon, which we looked at a little while back. That was another bag that works very well for daily and travel use. It has the ability to open clamshell style. It has compression straps so that you can pack some luggage in there. And it also is a pretty small size so that you can use it comfortably for your day to day. It's a little bit smaller than this bag. It comes in at 23 liters as opposed to the 25 that this bag is. And it doesn't have all the organizational options that this bag has, but it is a little bit lighter and you're also gonna be able to save a little bit of money. That bag comes in at about $120. So if you have a little bit of a tighter budget and you're looking for a stylish and versatile bag, that might be a good alternative to check out. The next bag that this reminded me of was the Knack Pack, which we recently reviewed. And that's been one of the most versatile bags that we featured on the channel. It has the ability to expand and compress quite a bit. It works well for both daily and travel use. It has a nice stylish look. I prefer the look of this bag a little bit, 
but the ability to expand and compress on that bag is definitely a big bonus. It also comes in a little bit cheaper at $175 for the medium expandable version that we looked at in the video. So if you want something that's gonna offer a little bit more space for traveling or you just like the added versatility of being able to compress and expand your bag, I definitely recommend you check out the Knack Pack. The next bag that might be worth checking out would be the Timbuk2 Never Check Expandable Backpack. That was another very stylish daily slash travel bag. It also had the ability to expand much like the Knack Pack. It was a little bit more similar in style in my opinion to this bag. It has a very modern look, very comfortable to wear, and also a very similar price point coming in at around $200. I prefer the look and feel of this bag just a little bit, but if you need that extra capacity offered by the expansion or you just like Timbuktu's bags in general, that may be a good option to check out as well. In the past, we actually made a video that featured some of the bags that we've enjoyed using for both daily and travel use, and the original Oppose This Invisible Carry-On was actually on that list. If we had made that list recently, I definitely would have included this bag in there as well. And so if you guys wanna see some of the suggestions that we had in that list to see how it compares with this bag here, I'll make sure to include a link in the description below. But with all that being said, the updated version of the Invisible Carry-On has been fantastic to use. It's been very comfortable. I really love the style. And if you're looking for something professional that's gonna work well in a variety of situations, I definitely recommend you guys check this one out. And if you're familiar with the original Invisible Carry-On, I'd love to hear what you think of the new updated look and the lack of the ability to expand and compress and the removal of the wings that the original had. I'm very curious to hear what you think and if you prefer this new version. And so I wanna go ahead and thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you guys found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like below. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.